Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to our Tuesday, May 10th, 2022 Board of Education meeting. Hello, thank you. Um, I'm gonna call the meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do roll call. So I'm gonna turn um, Vice President Raquel Alvarez. President. Thank you. Mike Blessing. Here. Eleanor Evans. Present. Eric Joyce. Present. All right, all present and accounted for. And we're gonna go to the Pledge of Allegiance. We are excited. We're gonna have Precious Spears from Pusat Elementary lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Have a little bit of a change. A little bit of a change, yeah. no problem. Kier, Kier we're Gerospe. flexible. Here, Gerospe's gonna help. But if everybody would stand. <clears throat> Put your right hand over your heart, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we are excited. We have some entertainment tonight from the FUSAT students. They're doing a drum performance.
Wow, that was amazing. Thank you, Fusad Elementary. Are they done? Yeah. All right. I'm ready for summer now. Thank you. That was great. Give them an applause, officer. All right. I love starting out like that. All right. Moving on to item 2C, public report of action in closed session. By a vote, a unanimous vote, the board took action to approve the appointment of Luis Martinez as principal of Mission Elementary. Luis, will you stand up? Luis. Luis, sorry. Luis. Congratulations. Thank you. By an unanimous vote, the board took action to approve the appointment of Hillary Cuevos Balanon as principal of Libby Elementary. Please stand. Congratulations. Nice. All right, moving on to item 2D. These are our student representatives from our high schools. We're going to start with Surfside Evan Hemmerly. So Evan, hello. Are you ready for summer? Not yet. Not yet. All right. <laughs> Turn it over to you, Evan. Is there a button on there? I'm sorry. Look at the button on top. Maybe it make it green. Yeah. Congratulations to our April students of the month, Angel Ford, representing Surfside High School, and Jorge Fernandez, representing Surfside Academy. Both students received a certificate of recognition and a Surfside teacher. Both students are duly nominated and selected by Surfside teachers and staff. Their nominations were based on their academic performance and positive interaction with their Here. Great job, Angel and Jorge. Three of our City of Oceanside Chamber of Commerce Rising Star recipients have applied for the Rising Star Scholarship. Zakali, Serde, Gomez, Angel, Fidel, Gomez, and Jasmine Perez will be attending a breakfast where scholarship awarded in all. Best wishes to the new applicants. On April 11th through April 15th, for Surfside Fish Avenue, this week was filled with interactive activities with students in grades K through 12. We participated in an egg relay egg toss and ended the week with an egg hunt. Those who found the golden eggs were awarded a gift card. Thank you to the administration, teachers, and staff for the supply of tribes and nations and for making this week fun for Surfside students. Surfside K-5 has enjoyed working to upgrade and expand Surfside's garden. Grades K-12 will work together with staff to give the garden area of perimeter a much needed refresh and added signage for many plants. The coastal native plant garden was also tended to by ecstatic young gardeners as they learned about plants and animals native to the coastal area. These activities highlighted the Surfside Educational Academy elementary program and increased focus on environment and how we can all work together to improve. Thank you, have a good evening. Thanks, Evan. Next up, we have Gabby Kimbrell from Oceanside High School. Go Pirates. Wait, can you guys hear me? Sorry. Okay. Um, good evening, I'm Gabby Kimbrell. 
Brown, I'm Ocean, Oceanside CAC President. Thank you, board, community, and Dr. Vitale for giving me the opportunity to talk about Oceanside. Okay, so this, oh, sorry. So this is what we've been up to. Um, we have summer, summer opportunities. Uh, we're gonna talk about some sports and we're gonna talk about the events we've had, held in the past few weeks. Um, here's some of our pictures of our amazing sports. Okay, so this is what we've been up to. Our Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, SHIP, um, held a night of science. We had a blood drive in April. We had Earth Day events all throughout that week of Earth Week. And we hosted the San Diego Bot Ball. So our pirates got to travel to Washington, D.C. Um, it's our mock trial team. They got to explore um, kind of what it's like in Washington, D.C. And as you can see, they look pretty excited about going. This is our uh, Road Corps Junior ROTC. Uh, they had a drill meet, which resulted in two teams. They had armed drill and color guard. And uh, they won the first place in armed drill inspection. And you can see, they look very exciting. Um, so congratulations to our four uh, pirates, honored by Mike Levin at the Art Oceanside Art Museum. Their artwork will continue to hang in the museum until May 22nd. We hope everyone can go check it out. Um, our upcoming events. So we have our Saber Awards, which is pretty much um, giving, like, sorry. <laughs> our Saber Awards, which is pretty much, um, we're giving, we're showing our, our amazing um, athletics and what they've done. There's um, different sections that they're competing for. We had AP testing this week and last week. Um, at the end of the year, choir and music are holding events. We have our prom in two weeks. We have Hello Goodbye, which is pretty much uh, we're welcoming the new seniors and saying goodbye to the old seniors. We have Grad Night at Disneyland and graduation uh, coming up in about a month. And we have some opportunities. And thank you for having me. Thank you. I like the jacket. All right, next up from El Camino High School, Liliana Tita. Um, my name is Haley Huffman. I'm standing in front of Lily today. Super. She is not here. So, my name is Haley. Uh, I'm the student represent the re representative for El Camino. Thank you for the board for this opportunity and board president Dr. Stacy begin as well as Superintendent Vitale. So we have upcoming is our one of our bigger events of the year. We have our annual Wildcat Run Car and Motor Show. Um, this upcoming Saturday, uh, May 14th, uh, it's a free family event. We hope that everybody can come out. It's also not only beautiful cars, but it has vendors, food, and live entertainment. So for the past couple weeks, from April 4th to April 8th, we had our spring break. We got to enjoy our time off, which was super nice. We have our high school, our high school all-star representatives, Sean Helgeson, who was recognized uh, by the High School Sports Association. The, yeah. The, so we have our career technical education. Uh, congratulations to Victoria Flores, who is a part of the ECHS Code Queens. Victoria was recently acknowledged by the National Center for Women and in Information Technology as a 2022 Career San Diego Affiliate Honorable Mention. She received the award of aspirations in computing based on her demonstration of at least one of the following. Pursuing the academic study of computing, exploring, and computing related activities. And the athlete of the week is Hawkin Miller, who broke our school record in shot put throwing. So from April 18th to April 22nd, senior Caitlin Enna signed her acceptance paperwork to attend Vanguard University to further her athletic and academic career. We then have our Crystal Apple Teacher Award the Seminary Students of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints annually host the Crystal Apple Award. Okay. Um, the ECHS Crystal Apple win winner this year is Mr. Levi Casillas. Mr. Casillas has taught at El Camino High School for 21 years and teaches ceramics and AP3D design. 
Congratulations to Alexander Doe received an honorable mention in the 2022 Congressional Art Competition out of the 127 submissions. The Athlete of the Week is Dakota Edwards. She is our softball pitcher and she threw enough hitter to beat Carlsbad 6 to 0. So between April 25th and April 29th, we had our surfing championships. Stephen Lusty placed second in bodyboard on the state high school surfing championships in Huntington Beach. We have our ultimate frisbee intramural, which AC is currently running. Our student created their own teams and played an ultimate frisbee tournament during lunch. And congratulations, our 22 valedictorian, Gerard Decker, he received a full four-year scholarship to California Institute of Technology through a Questbridge National College match. Our 2022 salutatorian Andrew Bichet, he committed to UCLA to major in physiology on pre-med track to be a doctor. We also had our senior night for boys volleyball and boys lacrosse, and for band and orchestra, congratulations to both our ECH band and orchestra groups who both earned a superior rating at the regional festival last week. And finally, we have our dance two and three show. Dance held the final dance show of the year, shredding the stage, the final show. And that's a couple pictures of all of the, our, we have a valedictorian, our salutatory, um, <laughs> and we have a couple of our sports and our dance show. Okay. And so we, for our softball, we are currently ranked fifth in Coastal North County League. For our girls across, we are currently second in the Palomar League. For swimming, our swimmer Miguel Bishop qualified for CIF and four events and made the Wildcat Boys Swim Hall of Fame for the 500 and 100 yard freestyle. And for track, our boys track team went undefeated and our Coastal League champions. For boys volleyball, we beat Mission Hills on senior night to win the league and beat Rancho Granado in the CIF play playoffs. For baseball, we are currently sixth in the Avocado East League, and for boys lacrosse, we are currently sixth in the Valley League. And that's all. Thank you. All right, moving right along to item 2E, approval of agenda. I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda, so that's 5G and 9F follow uh, the consent. All right, we have a first, do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a first and a second. All right, we'll take a vote. All in favor of amending the agenda as proposed, say aye. 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 All right, looks like it carries five. Oh, so moving on to, oh. On the consent agenda. So we need to do that right now? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna add another amendment to the agenda, so we're amending the agenda to add 5G and 9F right after the consent, we're moving them up, and we're also going to pull item 4P. 4P. Do I have any objections? No objections. No objections. No objections, all right. So we'll move with that. I'll only write that down, 4P. All right, thank you. All right, moving on to reports. I'll turn it over to Dr. Vitale for the superintendent's report. Yes, thank you. Just a couple things to report. Uh, we attended the Oceanside Chamber of Commerce Rising Star event where we honored Maya Huwache. I hope I said that right. And Maya wants to become a speech pathologist. Ariane Perdue from El Camino. Ariane plans to attend Miracosta in the fall and eventually transfer to a four-year university. And Jasmine Perez from C. And Jasmine wants to pursue a degree in sociology and mental health counseling. And this is always a wonderful time to hear the stories of our um, students and learn about their future plans. And we also have the opportunity to hear from their families and their uh, teachers. Um, had a wonderful opportunity to participate in the mock interviews with El Camino High School students. And it's their opportunity to have a mock interview for a job as if they were going into the workforce. And the students I interviewed were amazing. They all had Google Sites that they created uh, with their strengths, their areas of growth, and their future plans. So that was just a joy to participate uh, with those students. And I'm going to ask Erin Grable to come up to the podium. 
Aaron, come on up. Aaron is going to share a little bit about the El Camino High School Digital Arts Media Pathway, mm -hmm. specifically the student-run web design and graphic design business called 25 Design. Aaron, we're happy to have you here along with the students. So the mic is yours. Good evening, distinguished members of the board and members of the town, ladies and gentlemen as well. My name is Sarah Francis and this is Cindy Brown. We are students from El Camino High School and we are in the digital media pathway. We have come before you this evening to share a unique experience we have to tell you about how positive positivity affects us. Twenty-five Design is both a class and business provided here at Camino High School with over five years of experience here growing into a flourishing course and business. We are the only student-owned and operated business in the Oceanside School District. Twenty-five Design has begun in 2016 with the purpose of giving back to our community. Our business started with only 25 students, hence the name of our business, Twenty-five Design. <laughs> Our advisor and teacher, Mr. Eric Invertible, who is also a free plans designer, wanted a way to enhance the classes he has taught and make it more meaningful to the students. After partnering with the nonprofit organization called Real World Scholars, the team has been given seed money to pay for advertising, marketing, and also we have given hands-on support to successfully and efficiently shape our company from the ground up. As our company grew, the students created an infrastructure from coming up with a detailed plan to create call strips, proposal templates, and other creative social media posts. The students were expected to search businesses in our community and network to use their soft skills to convince people to hire our services. So our business, our goal is always strong with more refreshing websites. For the for those who for those clients who are for, at an affordable price, the, some benefits of our business is the cost is that this cost is turned out to much deeper and much more farther than the yeah, original we imagined. For the students, it was an opportunity to gain real world experience, expand a professional network, and practice skills that would be expected for them at graduation. For the business they talked with, it was a chance to expand and get more customers without having to spend a lot of money to create a connection with loyal, with local youth. Our mission is simple. We provide low-cost graphic and web solutions to our community while gaining the invaluable skills that we can use later in life. If, if you'd like to learn more about us or even hire us for your next project, scan the QR code. It's on the next slide. <laughs> the next slide. <laughs> there you go, there it is. Scan <laughs> the QR code on the screen or go to www.25designcorp.com. And the number is 25. And browser gallery of products. You can also follow us on social media and give us a call or even stop by our studio during business hours. Thank you very much for your time. And are there any questions? For us? <laughs> Sounds amazing. I think I have some work for you. Does that conclude your report? Thank you for that presentation. Great. So now we're going to item 3B, board reports. I'm going to turn it over to Vice President Raquel Alvarez for her report. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, been a little bit busy, just a little bit. Um, uh, started with um, Garrison Theater Club. They have a show starting or going on this weekend. And so getting back to the costumes, getting back to the theater club, I love it. The drama mama in me gets going again. Um, so just working with the students again, um, just seeing them getting back again into their normal 
um, routines of just being able to sing and laugh and be with each other and work with each other is just awesome. So I'm just excited about what this weekend will bring for them. Um, went to a wellness committee meeting. Um, great conversations. We're, we're looking at just being able to um, see what we can do within our schools and what do we need to do and, and work with our students so we show them differently as, as we want to be the example for a healthy, different lifestyle too. So um, how do we do that within our schools too? So bringing that, you know, when you have students saying that they're not happy with certain things, so how do we change those things in that perspective in their eyes too? And I love the gardens that we're seeing at all of our schools because that is amazing. I love that as we grow our own garden in our backyard with our son. So. It's awesome. Um, I had a meeting with Oda, um, learning about different things that their needs are, their, their things that are going on with them and seeing what's happening. Also had a meeting with CSEA, um, hearing about their needs and what they're looking at and what different things they have going. Um, also had a district tech meeting, um, committee meeting. That was interesting because we just we're going through again what we're gonna what our needs are. What are our needs of our students? What are we looking at? What are where we, where we need to change some things and how we need to do things differently for our students and the different things that our parents are saying with the, the, the Chromebooks and different things like that too. So being able to hear that and bring that back to the committee is also important and hearing the needs of our teachers and our staff of what their needs are to be able to provide for our students and what they need. Um, LCAP meeting, oh, that was interesting. Um, there's so much going on again to as far as LCAP goes, there's just so many aspects that we look at as far as like how we spend our monies and how we do. And we, you know, certain monies can only be spent for certain things. And and understanding that, um, I know as a parent, when I was just the parent part of it, I didn't understand a lot of it. So now being in the LCAP and being in a lot of these different committees, you see a, you see it differently, and you open your eyes to things a lot differently. So seeing those. Being in those meetings is important if you're a parent, and I also want to advocate those things are important too. Um, at a meeting with OPD and how they wanted to, um, I call it a blessing, because it's nothing short of that, um, for some of our students and giving them some rewards and stuff, because um, they're, they're doing this amazing thing, um, random acts of kindness within the community. So I, I want to thank OPD for doing that, that they chose us this month to be able to do that for our students, because that is awesome. And then um, I don't know exactly if they've shared that out already, so I don't want to say too much about it at this point. But um, just seeing that there, it, it does take a village. We talk about it takes a village to do things for our students and for our community. And so that, that just shows that they're a part of that. They're, they're connecting with us and they're doing things with us for our students and stuff. Um, I went to an ad hoc meeting also for the city of Oceanside for um, parks and recs and just hearing the needs again of our community for our students and how we want to be able to work and help our students again um, for after school things, for sports, athletics that are go on with our community so they work with our students so that they're there for our students, for those that want to be able to help them and work with them and do things with them um, and how we can work together as a team to, to make those things happen. Um, I also um, had a safety meeting, um, again, just getting ready to, to see, getting ready what graduation is going to look like and what we're going to be doing and how that's going to happen, how that's going to work and the safety and of everybody, you know, and everything that's going on. Also, um, I went to this amazing present celebration, actually a celebration more than anything. It's Girls Who Code Club um, here at Chavez. And um, Zai Sanders um, <laughs> um, invited us to come and, and see the celebration. They're, it's not just girls, it's actually young men too. Um, it's students within the school that want to experience coding. Um, she's brought this program into the school and um, it's, it's an amazing program because it's, it's, you look at the things that the students are doing, the websites that they've created, the things that they came up with to be able to create these websites was all on their own. It wasn't, they weren't given like you're going to do a, a website on this or anything. It was things that they came up with on their own. And so they've decided to create these sites as most of them sixth graders, I believe, um, actually. And so that, that alone to me, because as a sixth grader, I think I was just about like, how do I get up and go to school in the morning? You know, and so um, for them to be at this point right now and then just working in after school, to, to stay here, to be able to do these things and to create these sites and then to be acknowledged because they're, they're working with adults. This is an, a real company that came in that sponsored them 
and is showing and is showing them the different things. So it's a learning process for both of them, right? But at the same time, these students are creating or creating sites that people will actually go and look at. Things that adults, as adults, we go in and look at. Other students will go and look at. But they're doing things that adults are doing in the real world. So they're already getting that experience. So I want to applaud Zy Sanders for bringing that in, encouraging our students and growing that program for these students to find something different. Because things that they never would have figured out on their own, that this is a passion that they may have or that they could do something like this, for some of them, it's actually just finding their voice. Because as we, as we sit there or we sat there through the presentation, they were very soft-spoken, some of them. And so finding that, that voice within themselves, because I'm that person that will normally just sit back in the back and just not say much. But seeing these students to be able to find themselves and find their voice and find a passion within themselves is awesome. So I thank you so much for doing that with these students and just growing this program, because it sounds like it's something that we can grow not only just within here, but within our district and in upper levels. Because it's programs, it's a program like this that'll lead them into the programs that go into the CTEs, you know, as they go into high school, but finding it now and knowing now that this is something that they might like or want to do in the future, and even starting their own little businesses now as even sixth, seventh graders is amazing to me. So I thank you and I applaud you for that. Um, and I think I'm gonna finish on that because I was just in awe of that. So thank you, Sai. All right. All right, moving on to the next board report. Eleanor Evans, would you like to go next? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, Raquel's report was segued very much into my report. What I really would like to talk about tonight is profiles of a graduate, which is, we talk about school reform, and this is actually for Oceanside Unify. It will be school transformation. You know, we're gonna be setting objectives to transform our education system to enable our scholars to be highly competitive and highly successful in the 21st century. This is going to be an ongoing development in which our scholars, our staff, when I say staff, I mean everyone, whether you're an administrator, counselor, classroom teacher, um, building supervisor, bus driver, everyone's going to be involved in this. So it's a true transformation, um, a true change in attitude. We're going to be involved having the community, and at our meetings we had parents, we had people from the city of Oceanside, we had the mayor, we had council members, we had representatives from some of our, um, I guess, higher elected office, offices, okay? And all of us are gonna be working together to move our student, students forward. Historically, schools were always designed to maintain the status quo. That was the purpose of education, maintain the status quo. In Oceanside, we're going to take a different attitude. We're going to be promulgating our students into the future. We want them to be leaders, collaborators, communicators. You know, we have a program here called The Leader in Me, and we want it, which is kind of an inward program, we want to make it outward so that every student is a leader. So, you know, it's not a leader in me. Yes, I have that strategy and I have that attribute but also I'm gonna be a leader of you. And if we do that, you know, we can move forward and upward. An example is like we have a program, the Hospitality Pathways, which I'm still trying to become a fan of. You know, and I, I you know, like I, I'm, because of my traveling, I do spend a lot of time at hotels. And I, I would like for our students to not look at hospitality in terms of checking someone in and out of a hotel, but also being coming entrepreneurs, um, having business classes, business components, doing internships, which include design as well as, as being involved with the infrastructure, all those elements that go into um, having a successful business, okay? I also, visited at least eight other different activities, and I won't go through all of them, but I would like to talk about the Oceanside Sunset Market. You know, we have a booth there. Mm -hmm. We would love for folks to come and um, share their ideas um, politely, 
you know, so that we can communicate and <coughs> ideas can be presented, which is another avenue for us to be in the community. Okay. I would like to also congratulate si Saunders on our Teacher of the Year on her program because that really ties into what we're talking about in terms of <coughs> profile of a student. This month, we'd like to honor and celebrate Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, Jewish American Heritage Month, Mental Health Awareness Month. It is the end of each, which we celebrate um, to end Ramadan, which is a time of fasting and cleansing and, and reflecting. It's also Older American Month, and I assume that's anyone over 80. So no one qualifies in this room, I assume. But we'll still honor it. Okay. Um, it is Buddha's birthday on May the 8th. Um, human rights champion Malcolm X's birthday on May 18th. And the World Health Organization of the United Nations uh, recognizes um, International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia, Biphobia, and 132 nations under the guise of the United Nations has removed all of these kinds of phobia or as a disease. Okay, and of course May 30th is Memorial Day to honor all of our fallen heroes, those men and women, young and old, who died in military service for the United States of America. And we have a lot of students that have parents, guardians, um, who are in the military or relate some way in terms of being in the military. And we just want to say we honor and support you. As one who grew up on military bases and as one who comes from a military family, I can understand the um, emotions that many of our students feel who have um, relatives in the military. Thank you. That's my Thanks, report. Eleanor. All right, moving on to Eric Choice. Evening board colleagues. So just a couple of things uh, over the last couple of the last month that stand out. Um, one was the Oceanside High School Earth Day, which was so much fun. Uh, <laughs> I had no idea some of the cool things that they were doing at Oceanside High School. They had a vegan club that was helping kids find out where they can find vegan food around town. They had uh, making paper group that were uh, t taking paper and uh, old thrown away paper, recycling it, making new paper, seed paper that you could plant outside, uh, growing food towers. A local solar car producer from Carlsbad brought this back to the future style car that, that they let the kids play around and sit in and they sponsored some of the kids. It was really, really cool. Uh, local restaurants, the, including the plot and the greenhouse, had food and sushi. So this is, from what I'm told, just the beginning of what's going to be a really impressive and growing uh, day celebrated at Oceanside High School. So um, we had a great time, and I look forward to it again next year. Um, the next big item was that I joined the California School Boards Association in D.C. for the Coast to Coast Federal Advocacy. and. The highlight of the trip by far was the time that I got to spend with our Oceanside High School mock trial team who happened to be there at the same time. So they are such an impressive group of young people. Um, I'm sure that I'll be working for some of them in the near future. Uh, their advisors who volunteer their time to really make a tremendous impact on their lives is, is really an incredible one of a kind experience. Um, that I know that they'll take with them for the rest of their lives. It was, it was incredible. The, the other piece of that trip, obviously, was the federal advocacy. So I just want to bring the full report back to my fellow colleagues. We specifically advocated with our legislators about special education funding, which has been passed by the federal government as IDEA, which means we have to provide special education services. And when they passed it, they promised that they would fund it up to 40%. Currently, in California, the federal government is, is funding about 8% of the costs. So we, we advocated as a group, and I did individually, that we want to see that funding promise fulfilled. And our local representative, Mike Levin, has co-sponsored a bill to do just that. Um, we also advocated on behalf of universal school nutrition funding 
making sure that all kids have access to healthy, nutritious meals throughout the year, not just when school is in session. Um, he also signed on to that. Uh, we also were, were advocating about the mental health supports, which we hear a lot from about uh, from our teachers, from our students, from families. Mental health needs are skyrocketing right now, so we ask for support, not just funding, but also filling the pipeline of people who provide counseling to our schools. Early education funding, which was really key, Part C funding, and this is a little in the weeds, but the funding for kids that are zero to five of age, zero to five years of age, has decreased over the last 20 years, whereas all the other funding pieces have increased. So this is a piece that has been overlooked by the federal government, and so we ask that they adjust that. It obviously doesn't cost less now than it did 20 years ago to service students who have special needs before they're five years old. We also met with the Undersecretary of Education, Cindy Martin, and she, uh, the big takeaways from that meeting were that our COVID funds should be spent on services for kids and that we should really focus, uh, even though they are one-time funds, on creating innovative programs which serve students in a way that we haven't served students in the past. That was her big um, push. That was the, the, the Department of Education's push, is that this is a historic investment and that we want to make sure that we're servicing kids in a historically appropriate way. Um, that concludes my report. Thank you, Eric. Mike? Yeah, just one brief thing. I attended, along with some of my other board members, the um, Meet the City event by, uh, sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce at the El Corazon Swim Center uh, a couple weeks ago, and it was uh, well attended by a lot of folks. It was very interesting. I met a guy that I hadn't met before named uh, Bill Burney, who's the president of Front Wave Credit Union, and he announced to the group, quite and quietly, but that, that their firm has won the um, naming rights for the new soccer, indoor soccer arena up at El Corazon, which is uh, going to be named Front Wave. Um, so that's pretty cool. That, pretty cool that that thing's actually becoming real. Um, it's going to be 7,500 people for indoor soccer, or no, for concerts, and 4,500, I think, for, uh, for uh, uh, soccer events and stuff like that. So um, it's going to be a great facility for the community and for the schools and everything like that. So that was great news to hear that that's like real. If they're getting sponsorship money, big money down paid on it, they're going to get it built. So that's it. Super. Thanks, Mike. My report's pretty short. I did a lot of the same things as my board colleagues with the LCAP committee. And I did the mock interviews with El Camino High School seniors. And this is my second year doing it. The teacher, Chris Hawkins, puts it all together. And it's hundreds of seniors that go through these interviews with um, different business owners throughout the city. So it was great. I went to the Crystal Apple Awards, and I did go to the Chamber of Commerce networking event as well. I also met with the leadership from CSEA and with um, Oceanside Teachers Association as well. Um, I am excited because we have the groundbreaking, finally, for Pablo Talk Elementary. Um, that's the San Luis Rey and Garrison coming together, and that's June 6 at 2 p.m. So I'm excited to go to that and see that. And I've been really busy for the last couple of weeks. My son is taking the AP exam. He's in eighth grade at Chavez tomorrow morning. So they're very nervous um, for our eighth graders taking the AP in Spanish language. So anyways, wish them good thoughts tomorrow. So hopefully he goes to bed early tonight. Anyways, um, I also, this is the time of year where we celebrate people's accomplishments, especially with graduations coming up and all the, the other award ceremonies. But I have an award that I'd like to um, congratulate our superintendent. So I'm going to make you stand up. <laughs> Go ahead and stand up. So um, we'd like to congratulate Dr. Vitali. Her university, Claremont Graduate University School of Educational Studies, has given her a prestigious award. It's the 2022, I'm going to get this right, Urban Leadership Alumni Achievement Award. So for all your um, dedication and commitment to our students. All right, so moving on, we're going to item 3C, and this is CSEA um, report. Dora, is Dora here? There you are. Thank you. 
This is my first time in person, so. Good evening, board members, superintendent, and cabinet members. I know we did a slide deck presentation as well, but I also have a message. Um, my name is Dora Jaramillo. I am the president of the Oceanside California School Employees Association, chapter number 370. Tonight, I am here to give you a brief report from our classified community. This year has flown by. Can you believe we're in the last full month of the school year already? May seems to be the busiest month of the year. We have many things happening at our schools, promotions, graduations, award ceremonies, et cetera. And because of our classified members and our teachers also, all of this will be possible for our students and their family. You bring it every day. I don't believe he's doing the slide deck. I just have pictures of our classified members doing their thing. We also wanted to extend our appreciation to our amazing teachers. This is one of them. So these are the administrative secretaries over at the ESS celebrating Administrative Professionals Week. We went ahead and gathered some goodies and we went to each one of our school sites and presented our administrative secretaries with some much deserved goodies. Uh, in our classified doing their thing in the office, we have some of our Chavez uh, staff members here. some of our security and one of our administrative secretaries holding up the school, keeping it safe and running it smooth. Our health techs and office staff taking care of daily business to keep our students moving along throughout the day. Oceanside office staff leading their school with pride and looking good while they're at it. <laughs> We're classified, we bring it every day and we wanna thank them for all that they do. And before I end, I wanted to also extend our appreciation to our amazing teachers. Uh, May 11th has been proclaimed as the day of the teacher. Thank you to all of our OUSD teachers for their hard work and dedication to our students and their families. You are all amazing. Classified School Employees Week is coming soon. The week of May 15th through the 21st has been proclaimed as your week, classified school employees. This year we are celebrating the theme, we are classified, we bring it every day. We are essential, we are united and we're strong. Online and on campus, we're behind the scenes, on the front lines, in the classroom. We make it happen for our teachers, academic staff, administrators, students, and communities. From the first day of preschool to the last day of community college, a CSEA member is there to assist in order to keep California education moving forward. Our patience has been tested, we've remained resilient, we've fallen down and helped each other stand up, and yet we continue to face challenges unlike anything we've seen in our lifetime. But we will face them together with a smile, some courage, and a shoulder to lean on. We bring ourselves, our talents, and our passion to our schools, community college, county office of education, and the public. Our work is important now than, more important now than ever to keep our students learning and to work towards, to work towards a kinder future. We are everyday superheroes along with our teachers. We build connections and inspire lives in our communities. We get it done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dora. <laughs> Item 3D is our other labor partner, Oceanside Teachers Association, Tiffany Cooper Ortega. Thank you so much. Good evening. I am Tiffany Cooper Ortega, and I'm pleased to be able to report on behalf of the members of ODA as their president. Next slide, please. Happy May, everyone. We are in the home stretch of a very difficult year. ODA members and leadership collaborated with OUSD on the ongoing committee work listed here. Additionally, we began negotiating our ODA OUSD contract for the 22 23 school year. Next slide, please. So, this is my favorite part. I just all the other parts are important, but let's get to the good stuff. So for this month, I would love to spotlight a teacher from Martin Luther King Jr. Middle School, who happens to be in the audience, by the way, 
Please let me introduce you to Juliet Esposito. You don't know who Juliet is? That's Lita, you know, back there. Mrs. Esposito has been a teacher in Oceanside since 1988, beginning her career as an adaptive physical education teacher, working with students at several sites. In 1994, she heard something about a new middle school, and she was really interested in being part of that staff. But since the positions of PE were all filled, she decided to leverage her biology major, I'm sorry, minor, which allowed her to teach life science, which she still does. Fun fact, Ms. Mrs. Esposito is the only teacher from the proud faculty that actually opened King Middle School that's still teaching. Um. Next slide, please. So I'm not here to talk only about her being one of the original faculty members of King. I'm here to share her passion for science, her commitment to students, and her advocacy for inclusive practice both socially and academically. One kernel of wisdom that Lita shares with other teachers is try to make a connection with students outside of the classroom. This allows you to see the student in a different light and also witness other kinds of growth. One way that Mrs. Esposito connects with students outside of the classroom is through coaching track and field and cross country at King Middle School and also supervising their green team. Next slide, please. When asked about her accomplishments for which she was the most proud, she shared that she is pleased with her advocacy for LGBTQIA students at all levels and her work on the progressive curriculum for health and human development that is California Healthy Youth Act compliant. She has remained a mentor, confidant, and source of inspiration for students, community members, and her colleagues. As you might have guessed or may have already known, Lita Esposito is retiring at the end of this school year. Although she is looking forward to her next chapter of retirement filled with gardening and exercising and cooking and home projects and traveling with her husband Joe, she's going to be really busy. We're fortunate here in the Oceanside community that she also is planning to do volunteer work at King because she will definitely be leaving a giant Lita Esposito sized hole, she's actually very petite, in our school district. Thank you so much for your service to the Oceanside community and for advocating for our students. Will you stand up, Lita? Slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. Also, I'd like to recognize that tomorrow, just as my colleague Dora mentioned, um, tomorrow, Wednesday, May 11th, is California Day of the Teacher and National School Nurse Day. At the end of a long year that has been described by many as one of the most difficult in their career, including some here at this table, Oda wants to say thank you to the teachers and support staff of Oceanside Unified. You truly are the heart of the community and the minds that power our future. Additionally, here in Oceanside Unified, you're the face of our schools and also the backbone. And I'd like to thank Trustee Joyce because you know what else you are? You're the ones who provide those services that COLA should be spent on. <laughs> you're greatly appreciated and as always, I'm humbled to work alongside you all. Next slide. So I'd like to ask for a moment of science, silence to remember Oceanside High School teacher David Bennett who passed away this week. Thank you very much. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item four, general consent items. We have one public comment. Am I correct? Yes. All right. And and Good evening. Um, just a question um, on the item 4J on the warrant list. I just try and and decipher on that, it's kind of fun. But there were two items that I was questioning, and one was the revolving cash fund um, for Jordy Sparks, $1,976 salary payment, and another one for 8,700. I didn't quite understand that as I thought he was a salaried person, no? 
so you can but, answer your questions during you public answer, comment, but you, you can answer. share your comments. Okay, so that was the question on someone that already gets a salary, the um, items there on the warrant list. The other item that was not necessarily a monetary thing concern as much as it was questioning um, why the board would be sending these people to the ASCA, which I understand is pretty much you are compelled to send the counselors to that yearly. Uh, evidently, it was a good function years ago for the counselors, but in the last several years, it's become very um, liberal and woke in its con workshops. The um, topic this year in July is on equity, once again, that term equity. And I just wanted to do a caveat for all of you who are voting on this, as well as any parents who are here or watching, that today San Diego supervisors voted on an equity topic uh, redefining the definition of women. Are you aware? And that does now in San Diego County include um, transgender and those not born as a woman, as a female. So I'm wondering where this equity uh, and they, they guised it as equality for women who, um, depending on your definition, right? So I'm wondering where that definition of equity, equality for women is coming to a school district in Oceanside. Uh, so when you vote on sending, you know, your counselors to this ASCA conference, um, that's a concern and it's a concern that um, it's, it really, they're going to, according to Rodney Robinson, what, why all students deserve the equity and how school counselors can set their schools and districts on a path towards true equity. And we've heard that topic over and over again in favor of ABCs. We've heard the topic and the money and the focus on equity. So I would um, ask you to be aware when you vote on these topics and even the warrant list of what you're voting for. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back to general consent items. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Oh. And this is A through CC, we pulled item P. Correct. All right, so we have a first and a second. Any questions? All right, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving the general consent items, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 5G. All right, I'll turn it over to you, Eric. Okay. Thank you. So this month, we are recognizing and celebrating Juneteenth Day of Observance. So I'll read the resolution. Whereas Juneteenth Day of Observance, Juneteenth honors and celebrates June 19th, 1865, where an enslaved Americans in Galveston, Texas were informed that they were free more than two years after President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. Whereas on Friday, June 18th, 2021, President Biden signed federal legislation and issued a proclamation recognizing Juneteenth as the nation's newest national holiday. Whereas Ed Code Section 37220 states that public schools shall close on certain specific holidays, all days appointed by the president or governor as a public fast, Thanksgiving, or holiday, unless it is special or limited holiday and any other day designated as a holiday by the governing board of the school district. Whereas Ed Code Section 45203 states that if a classified employee is required to work on such a holiday, the employee is entitled to be paid compensation or given compensating date time off for such work in addition to the regular pay received for the holiday at the rate of the time of one and a half the employee's regular rate of pay. Whereas the state of California 
has not to date amended Ed Code Section 37220 to include Juneteenth as a specific school holiday, nor has the Governor Newsom to date appointed Juneteenth as a state holiday, whereas the board is committed to fostering a climate of equity, equality, diversity, and inclusion, including where the freedom of black Americans is celebrated. And whereas notwithstanding that the state of California has not yet taken action to make Juneteenth a school holiday, the board desires to appoint Juneteenth as a holiday within the Oceanside Unified School District. Now, therefore, let it be resolved that the Board of Trustees of Oceanside Unified School District hereby appoints Juneteenth as a school holiday to be formally recognized and celebrated within our district beginning in 2022 and in future school years. Be it further resolved that the superintendent or designee shall take all necessary measures in, uh, to affect implementation of this resolution. And I want to thank, uh, we have a representative from the North San Diego County NAACP uh, with us, Ms. Karen Bickham, to receive this resolution uh, should it pass and be signed. And so, should we go ahead and do the motion. vote motion? So I'd like to make a motion to approve. I'll second. All right, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving this resolution? Item 5G, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. <laughs> Thank you for accepting that. All right, so we're moving on. To, we move 9F, and that's resolution number 45. I'm gonna turn that over to Raquel Alvarez. Thank you. Um, as rec, um, Oceanside Unified Recognition of Asian American and Pacific Islander Month, May 2022, resolution number 45, 2021-2022. I apologize now if I get um, the wording wrong or I say things wrong, please, I apologize. <clears throat> Whereas Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month in the United States was celebrated beginning in 1978 and was made into a month long event in 1992. And whereas Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month seeks to honor and recognize the contributions of residents from Asia, India, and the Pacific Islands. And whereas Asian Pacific encompasses all of the Asian continent and the Pacific Islands of Melanesia, New Guinea, New Caledonia, Vanuatu, Fiji, and the Solomon Islands, Micronesia, Marianas, Guam, Wake Island, Palau, Marshall Islands, Kiribati, Kiribati, Nauru, and the Federated States of Micronesia, and Polynesia, New Zealand, Hawaiian Islands, Rotuma, Midway Islands, Samoa, American Samoa, Tonga, Tuvalu, Cook Islands, French Polynesia, and Easter Islands. And whereas the Oceanside Unified School District recognizes the Asian American and Pacific Islanders have played vital roles in shaping our nation and advocating for labor law changes to fighting in multiple wars. <clears throat> Excuse me. And whereas the district recognizes that within the community, this community, there is a diverse, vibrant group of people who bring together a mix of culture, languages, religions, beliefs, and history. And whereas the district can celebrates and honors the diversity of our Asian American and Pacific Islander communities and their contributions to the fields of education, medicine, science, law, arts, public service, and technology, and whereas they have made and continue to make these contributions while also facing persistent inequality, discrimination, persecution, and acts of heinous violence. And whereas the district is committed to and advocates for equal educational, professional, and social opportunities for Asian American and Pacific Islanders while supporting the education of our students who are from this community to prepare them to continue to work of their ancestors and breach, and breach the barriers that are currently still in place. And whereas the district believes that there will be a day when Asian American and Pacific Islanders will no longer struggle for equality, to that end the district will celebrate May 1 to May 31, 2022 as Asian American Pacific Islander Month. Be it further resolved that the Oceanside Unified School District Board of Education strongly encourages our staff and community to observe, rec 
to observe, recognize, and celebrate the culture, heritage, and contributions of, American, of Asian American and Pacific Islanders to our country, our state, our cities, and our schools. Um, is Dory Harris here by chance? Hi, Dory. Um, we want to thank Dory Harris. She's um, the president of the, the Philam Cultural Organization. We would like to bring you forward as we present this, um, this resolution to you. Thank you. We still need to vote on that. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a first and a second. All in favor of approving item 9F, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. All right, moving on to item 5A. This is a public hearing for proposed reopeners for the 2022 20. 23 school year, and I'm opening the public hearing at 7.09 p.m. Do we have any public comments? All right, I am promptly closing the public hearing at 7.09 p.m. Um, and we're moving on to item 5B, proposed reopener with the California School Employees Association, CSEA, and its chapter 370 to negotiate with the Oceanside Unified School District for the 2022-23 school year. Mr. McIntyre, would you like to? Yes, yeah, staff has received the Sunshine proposal from CSEA, and we've exchanged ours as well as recorded in 5A, 5B and C. All right, thank you. I'll make a motion to approve. A second. A first and a second. Any questions? All right, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, item 5B, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. 5C, you already answered that. <laughs> um, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. A first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 5D, the approval of new certificated job descriptions, teacher on special assignment, curriculum and instruction, counselor on special assignment, college and career readiness. Two new certificated positions that Human Resources has created job descriptions for board approval in anticipation of a grant fund that will help support these services to students and staff. Thank you for the explanation. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Do we have any questions for staff? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 5E. Adoption of resolution number 32 for the 21-22 school year, proclamation for day of the teacher, which is Wednesday, May 11th. I'd like to go ahead and read that resolution. All right. Whereas teachers make public schools great, whereas teachers work to open students' minds to ideas, knowledge, and dreams, and where as teachers keep American democracy alive by laying the foundation for good citizenship, Whereas teachers fill many roles as listeners, explorers, role models, motivators, and mentors, and whereas teachers continue to influence us long after our school days are only memories, and whereas teachers are deserving of recognition for the work they do to nurture the next generation of citizens, therefore now the Board of Education of Oceanside Unified School District does hereby proclaim Wednesday, May 11th, 2022, as Day of the Teacher. Thank you for reading that. I'll make a motion to approve. A second. First and a second. Any questions? All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to the next item, 5F, adoption of resolution number 33, the 21-22 school year, Classified Employee Appreciation Week. And again, I'd like to read this resolution. It states, whereas the California School Employees Association and the California State Legislature has designated the third week in May as Classified School Employees Week, and whereas classified professionals provide valuable services to the schools and students of the Oceanside Unified School District, 
and whereas classified professionals contribute to the establishment and promotion of a positive instructional environment, and whereas classified professionals serve a vital role in providing for the welfare and safety of Oceanside Unified School District students, and whereas classified professionals employed by the Oceanside Unified School District strive for excellence in all areas relative to the educational community, therefore be it resolved that the Oceanside Unified School District hereby recognizes and wishes to honor the contributions of all its employees to quality education in the state of California and in the Oceanside Unified School District and declares the week of May 15th through 21st, 2022 as Classified Employee Appreciation Week in the Oceanside Unified School District. Thank you for reading that. All right, I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. I have a first and a second. I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving. So that resolution number 33, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item six, curriculum and instruction. We have quite a few items under there, but um, item 6A, the ratification of purchase approval of new history social science curriculum, grades K-5. Thank you, good evening, Board of Education. Uh, we actually have three items for curriculum adoptions this evening. Um, I'd like to start off by sharing with you the process that we have when we adopt new curriculum. Education Code uh, uh, 60200 and 60313, which was adopted in 1976, enacts how instructional materials are to be adopted in grades K, I'm sorry, first through eight. The process involves making sure that the review committees which will include volunteers, content level experts, instructional material reviewers, and a majority of classroom teachers will be put together to create a committee to inspect the materials that are presented. After reviewing and adopting these, these materials, the State Board of Education will make sure that these are consistent with the criteria and standards for quality as described in the state's standards and curriculum frameworks. We make sure that these materials are factual, incorporate principles of instruction that are reflective of current and confirmed research. In addition to that, we wanna make sure that they, are assigned to, that they are aligned with the state standards for the state in the subject area and the grade level appropriate for the students. So in this case, for our very first adoption, we're talking about our history social science framework. There are four key areas of emphasis in our new framework. These include a content area, inquiry, literacy, and citizenship. In the content areas in kindergarten through third grade, the framework ensures that students are exploring the world and know where their place is in it. In the fourth grade and extending through high school, the grade levels are organized with either a United States history focus or within a world history focus. The US history course, which includes grades four, five, eight, 11, and 12, the topic is freedom. Students explore the evolution of the concept of freedom, and as importantly, they investigate the ways in which different Americans contested, shaped freedom from the founding of our republic with the founding fathers to continuing into recent times as we look to continue civic engagement. Students consider the ways in which the quest for liberty, freedom, and the equality has been transformative in the American experience. These are explored through the framers of the Constitution and the contributions of the many Americans who are seeking to define the meaning of citizenship across the country and the contributions of diverse Americans. California students also learn about history and the geography of the world beyond our national borders. This occurs in sixth, seventh, and 10th grade. We also believe that history social science is essential in inquiry. Social science provides students with the opportunity to highlight the importance of chronological thinking, research, evidence, examining point of view, critical thinking and literacy, especially in informational text as outlined in the Common Core State Standards. It's important for students to understand the relationships between events, chronological understanding, the understanding of perspective, and of bias. In our lower elementary, our kindergarten and third graders, the key questions are for them. How are our lives different from those who lived in the past 
and how are our lives the same? Literacy, we want to ensure that our history of social science focuses on the importance of being able to read and write clearly and distinctly and using text-based disciplines of vocabulary, reading, writing, and discourse. And finally, citizenship. History and the related studies of social science emphasize the importance of civic and democratic values as in integral components of citizenship. The framework encourages students to understand the relationship between citizens in the state and in the nation to understand the importance of a representative democracy and presents opportunities for students to learn about the ways that they can become civically engaged and how they can use their citizenship to further the goals of a free society. They learn to think critically about their worlds and ha learn how the government functions, to, in, not only in the abstract, but how it is to have the importance of civic engagement, participa participation, and a representative democracy. In addition to that, as we've done with all of our, uh, as we've done with these um, workshops, we want to make sure that we know that we also follow the law in parent and community engagement with review of materials. The state law requires that for health and human development topics, as noted in section 51937, that parents and families are allowed and encouraged to participate in the review of these materials and have the option to opt out of them. However, in history, social science, and English language arts, that is an optional uh, opportunity, but one that our state robustly participates in. The materials that we reviewed were set across the state, available for public viewing in a variety of locations, including one at the San Diego County of Office of Education for many months. And in addition to that, in April of this uh, we also had it here in our local district for people to be able to come and review the adopted and recommended materials. So getting back to our elementary high, uh, history social science adoption, we are very excited that in September of 2021 we started on the process and we had a team of Oceanside Unified School District employees and leaders visit the San Diego County Office of Education to review the approved a curriculum for history social science that had been approved by the State Board of Education as outlined in the previous uh, description. There was an application for teachers to be part of the team, then email was sent to all teachers, and on November 1st, the adoption team of 11 classroom teachers, one special education paraprofessional, and eight representatives from the ESS, or the Educational Support Services, met. The, overall, the team met eight times to review materials and share their feedback. We are very happy to inform you that after extensive analysis, field testing, we have uh, an exploring process that is aligned to the outlined requirements of the law. The History Social Science Adoption Team is recommending TCI Social Studies Alive for an adoption for six years at a cost of around $900,000. We recommend approval as this will be an adoption again for six years for every student in our district. Thank you. Thank you for that very thorough explanation. We have one public comment on this item. Good evening. Good evening. You've all heard from me many times uh, about my passion for teaching the Constitution, to, especially the eighth graders. So when I saw this item on the agenda, I jumped at the chance to go down. I went to the district office. Uh, think, I want to thank uh, Greg Smedley for making it possible for me to examine the material. I spent a couple hours on it. And um, I think I'm going to surprise you. I actually loved it. I thought it was excellent. And I really think it does, uh, it's, it's great, it's uh, appropriate, grade appropriate, age appropriate. and. Uh, I think it does a good job. Now, the, the bad news is I would like to passionately uh, request, uh, urge you to go back to the 90s and 80s, decades back, and reinstate the requirement that eighth graders pass a comprehensive test on the Constitution. Because I don't think it's enough to just you know have it in the book and hope they read it, hope they learn it. Uh, I'd like you to, to 
reinstate that requirement uh, for graduation from the eighth grade. And I'm not going to just let this be another one of those things that I ask for that's forgotten and, and ignored. So I'm going to make this a, a campaign, and uh, you'll hear more from me. So I hope you'll address that, at least talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So item 6A, do we have any questions for staff, board colleagues? I actually have a comment. Um, this was so long overdue. Thank you so much um, to the committees for all the work that was put into it. I know for myself, um, coming in to this as a parent and into the district as a parent and now as a board member, this was one of my priorities was to get the curriculum updated. It was so outdated with my kid just being in the starting in the elementary level. So doing all this work, I thank you all so much. It was a lot. I know it's a lot of work and I know it takes a lot of time. But for all those that were on the committees and everything that you all do, I thank you all very much because, again, this was so overdue. And it, I'm excited now to just move forward. And like you said, I actually read it, too. And I was excited about the stuff that was actually in it because it was it made me kind of think back to like, oh, I need to read that again. But Long um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Long ago. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you again for all the work for everyone from everyone and all the stuff that was done with that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, I'll make a motion to approve. <clears throat> I'll second the motion. <clears throat> I wanted to say them real quick too. Um, I, I also got a chance to read into these and I am approach this very skeptically too because I'm also very passionate about making sure that our students learn about the Constitution and about civic engagement and about our history and how that interrelates. Um, I was also impressed with what I found. Um, Citizenship was a huge focus from a very early age and understanding what it means to be a good citizen was, was emphasized and, and talked about in an appropriate way. The Constitution was in the upper level text and a big focus on the contributions from across our country that have not always been in our textbooks but are in these textbooks. And so I'm thankful. Eight meetings <laughs> is a lot to, to go into uh, this kind of content and the test drive it. It's a lot of work. Um, and so I'm very thankful that our team took this seriously and, and did a wonderful job. So I'm excited and I'm happy to support. Awesome. All right, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 6A, say aye. 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 Thank you. We're moving on to 6B, which is very similar. This one is for the adoption for grade 612, so we don't need a explanation, or do you have more? I just want to recognize the members of the team. We did have members from our secondary school sites. We did go to our curriculum advisory committee, and um, I would like to actually uh, acknowledge the efforts of our directors of secondary and our executive director of secondary, Dr. Uh, Lawrence, uh, Mr. Smedley, our elementary director, uh, Mrs. Bell and our executive director elementary, uh, Mrs. Gravelin. This was 100% their work and the leadership over the teams and all of the teachers who gave their time to be part of this. So thank you. Thanks, Thanks for the hard work. All right, we have one public comment on this item as well, item 6B. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> all right, thank you. All right, so uh, I'll make a motion to approve item 6B. Second. We have a first and a second. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of item 6B, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 6C, the ratification of purchase approval of new English language arts curriculum, grade 611. Thank you very much. I just wanted to, to uh, also re, uh, remind everyone that we did go through the same process with this adoption, but I would like to highlight some of the important pieces with this new adoption. Uh, one of those things is that we have five themes in English language arts. They include meaning making, language development, effective expression, content knowledge, and foundational skills. This continues to focus on a variety of reading throughout an organized uh, reading list that we have positions of cultural diversity, multilingualism, and biliteracy are valuable and a priority that there is a comprehensive approach to English language development for our multilingual learners, include both an integrated and designated portion, and that we also have guidance for teaching a, the range of learners from those students who are gifted and talented to those students who need more support and specialized design instruction. 
This calls for collaboration among students and educators and families to ensure that we are providing a curriculum that is robust. Very excited to report that um, in working with the, with the team, we have a, for the first time, and actually I would, in my, in my experience, the first time in any district I've worked with, that we have an aligned 6 through 12 English language arts comprehensive curriculum mm -hmm. for the students in Oceanside. This is a huge accomplishment and it really speaks to the hard work of our teachers and the alignment and the focus on academic excellence that we are pursuing here in Oceanside Unified School District. We would like to recommend McGraw-Hill Study Sync to the Board of Education as our 612 Language Arts ELD adoption. Thanks for that thorough explanation. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Do we have any questions? When was the last time we adopted? 20 Secondary. years ago. Long time ago. Okay. I, believe, I believe it is more than 20 years ago. It's we longer. had done one or two yeah. adoptions here and there, but it's been a very long time. Yeah, so just on the, the eve of the day of the teacher, it's just really, I just can't stress enough how important this is for great teachers to have great curriculum to work with. We're gonna see this pay off for a long time. I agree, and I really am thrilled about this. I'm thrilled that um, it's, it's being tiered for both the Gates student, gifted and talented student, as well as the struggling reader, or, and as well as the, those readers who read extremely well but hate reading and won't read. So, you know, it's high interest, and thank you. And I love the fact that you use one of my favorite words, rigor and robust, so thank you. Right. Thank you and to the committee, thank you. We have, a first, we have a first and a second. I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 6C, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 6D, approval of license agreement with Edmentum for Apex Learning. Apex Learning is our uh, online uh, delivery of instruction for credit recovery for our Surfside Academy. And approval of this item will ensure that our t teachers and students will have these online materials that are aligned through our A through G graduation requirements and credit recovery. So approval of this is recommended to ensure that we have the materials in an online format for the students. I'll make a motion to accept that. I'll second. I have a question though, real quick. Is, have we talked to, the, to them actually and made sure that they are, they're good with still APEX and it being the best thing for those students as they go through credit recovery? Yes, we're continuing to examine some other options. Um, Dr. Lawrence and I were at a conference recently, and some of the other options are in development, but not quite ready for our district, but we are keeping our eye on those so that we can always have the best possible. Thank you. And this is to support our independent study program this at Surfside too? Yes. Which is a? And credit recovery. And credit recovery. Awesome. Now, is there a minimum amount of hours um, but they have to be in the classroom for credit recovery, or can it be all online? They complete a certain course of work, and then they earn the uh, credit. It's not based on seat hours, but based on um, achievement through the program. Okay, thank you. All right, we have a first and second. I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 6D, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to 6E, approval of agreement with Elevation Education Platform. Thank you. Yes, this is very exciting. As we know, our multilingual learners and those students, um, also known as English learners, are um, being, it is important that we monitor and support them every step of the way in their English acquisition. This is an online tool that will allow us to be sure that we are meeting all of the benchmarks for them. It will allow us to monitor their progress, provide intervention as needed, and um, is really the next step in using digital, uh, digital tools to support our students. Cool. I'll make a motion to approve. Seconds. Do we have any questions for staff? All right, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 6E, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to 6F, approval of memorandum of understanding with Vision to Learn. Yes, this is very exciting. As we know, um, vision acuity is one of the things that are most uh, of impact with students who are at times struggling to read. And we know that when students are able to receive the glasses that they need, they do better in school. This is part of our community schools work 
And we know that there are barriers in our community schools for students at times receiving those glasses that go far beyond um, the financial burden. What is one of the key things is getting the appointments, missing class, being pulled out of class to get exams or to get the eye class, eyeglass prescriptions filled. So after uh, a lot of work, our community schools, L Laurel, Libby, Mission, and Jefferson Middle School, this memorandum of understanding will provide a mobile vision clinic to come and provide glasses to our students. This year alone, we will be starting with 30 pairs of glasses. We believe that next year we're hoping to expand this to many hundreds more, and this memorandum of understanding will allow us to continue our partnership um, and support even more students in our district. Thank you for that thorough explanation. Are there any questions for staff? That's incredible. No, great program. I just love that we're going to be able to expand it not just to our community schools, but to other schools as other students are going to need the services within our community. So I'm excited about that. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. <clears throat> First and a second. I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 6F, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item seven, which is business. 7A is a public hearing, approving to adjust statutory school facility fees imposed on new residential and commercial industrial construction. I'm gonna open the public hearing at 7.34 p.m. Do we have any public comments? All right, I'm going to close the public hearing at 7.34 p.m. And we'll move on to item 7B. And do you want to talk about that, Dr. Norman? Thank you. Thank you, President. Begin. We have approval of fee study. School fees apply to new residential and commercial industri industrial construction within school district and are authorized by the State Allocation Board, SAB. The maximum per square foot amount is established by the SAB for unified school districts for residential construction or reconstruction, $4.79 per square foot, and for commercial industrial construction, $0.78 cents per square foot. Okay. Statutory school fees for OUSD were last increased in June 2020. It is recommended that the board approve the fee study and adopt resolution number 36, increasing school fees following a public hearing, which we just did. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a person and a second. Any questions for staff? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 7B, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 7C. Thank you. This is Tax and Revenue Anticipation Notes, also known as TRANS. OUSD fiscal staff is working with the San Diego County Office of Education to determine if we will need to participate in a TRANS later this year. TRANS are short-term financings Andy? issued by Andy. Them. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Unless my agenda is different, 7C is third interim. No. Is mine different? Yes. yes. I have it as. Stand by. Maybe mine's. I old. have it as E. Third interim is E. Okay. Yep. All we right. got the early version. Going. Continue with your trans. <laughs> Thank you. My apologies. Trans are short term financings issued by the California School and Community College Districts to manage cash flow. The county requires that each of the districts considering participation submit their signed adopted trans resolution as part of the agenda materials for the county board action item. Because the county does not have a scheduled meeting in July, we must submit a board approved resolution early. Although we are requesting an amount not to exceed $45 million, we haven't yet determined how much funding, if any, will be required. We will first need to consider what the governor presents in the May revision, as well as the district's projected budget for 22-23. OUSD will work directly with SDCOE to analyze our cash flow and decide if we should participate in the trans or not. Right. So we're seeking approval of the resolution to participate in the trans. Right. What's, what's the what's the range you think? I mean, good 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 or bad in terms of the options? The full forty five down to. I don't think we'll million. need the full forty five. We're still we're using numbers that are a little bit outdated because we hadn't finished the interim yet, and we still can't consider what the mayor is going to put forward. Um, and because everything's a month early, they realize that, and so they're basically waiting for the May revise and for us to finish our interims, and then we engage in conversations with them. You meant to say the governor, right? Not the mayor. Oh, the governor. Yes, yeah, sorry. I wish the mayor would put some money governor, forward. I apologize. I she is. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, you can. All right, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. 
we have a first and a second. Any more questions for staff? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 7C, say aye. 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 Motion carries four and someone's out, so. Zero, Eric. All right, moving on to the next item. 7D, we have approval of the cooperation agreement with the City of Oceanside and Vandale Homes. This proposed sale of portions of the property to two different buyers, the city and the developer, requires a division of the property and the creation of two new legal parcels and cooperation between the parties to ensure efficient development of the adjacent city parcel and developer parcel. This item approves the cooperation agreement and authorizes staff to move forward with its execution and taking other steps necessary to effectuate its intent. I'll move approval. It's a really excellent agreement, fairly simple and straightforward, surprisingly. I'll second. Are there any questions for staff? All right. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 7D, say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, moving on to the last item, 7E. Thank you. 7E is the third interim report. The third interim financial report shows actual revenues and expenditures, budget revisions, projected ending balances, and multi-year projections, as well as an average daily attendance and cash flow projections. I'm gonna go ahead and move through a short presentation, if we could have the next slide, and then we'll go right into the presentation if you wanna to go to the next slide. So here we have the general fund combined comparison. Sorry, I thought it was bringing me some. This slide shows our budget when we combine both the unrestricted and the restricted funds. The restricted funds are one-time monies. The one-time monies come with strings attached and have to be used within the constraints of how they were awarded. We were able to meet our reserves this year at using some of these one-time monies to help us through our structural deficit. For example, paying expenses related to staffing and other major purchases. Next slide. Now we have components of the ending fund balance. We have our non-spendables, restricted, committed, and assigned. Our non-spendable, you can see going from first to second, we paid our SERP out, and that was a major portion there. We have our restricted, which are our titles. Then we have our committed, which has to do with our post-retirement, that's a set amount, and our assigned went down to zero in third interim because we took that out for a couple of reasons. Um, we had our Measure W meeting where we decided turf replacement would be paid for out of bond, and um, so we moved that down to zero. And then third is calculated on expenditures on the combined summary. Next slide. Here's our general fund unrestricted comparison. Unrestricted are our dollars we have the most control over. Um, the biggest shift, we had the restricted funds were made mostly up of categoricals. They increase and decrease depending on when they are received and when they are spent. The committed funds are our, I'm sorry, I apologize, I'm in the, uh, there we go. The first slide shows only the unrestricted funds. Uh, we are now compared to the second interim revenue on the first line will reduce slightly as did our expenses. So you can see our revenue was 153 and we came much closer to other expenses of 153,481. Uh, it went down a little bit because we had to pay our district contributions to SPED and restricted routine maintenance and other commitments as well as other <coughs> revenue adjustments that come in at this time of the school year. Next slide, we have multi-year assumptions. So assumptions, we had some good news. Our P2 came in a little bit higher. We were running at about 87% in P1 and that's our first um, segment of our attendance, our P2 is our second. Major reason being is that we don't have massive amount of students on quarantine anymore, so that's really positive. So when kids are actually able to come to school, we have more kids coming to school, and so that helps with our funding also. So we have for our P2, we went up to 91.2%. Um, what we use now for 22-23 and 23-24, we use projections that come from the county, and that's where we get those numbers. Then we have our MYP COLA revenue, for 21-22, that's this year, we're at 5.07. We're anticipating 5.33 for next year. And then for 23-24, we have 3.61. And then our declining enrollment. So when you see shifts in even though your COLA may go up, but we still have declining enrollment and that's our major source of revenue. Our COLA is also, but our declining enrollment outpaces what our revenue is coming in from COLA. Next slide. 
So here's our changes in ADA. I shared this in our last interim. Um, the first line was actual year. The second line was actual ADA. And then we have ADA funding year and then what the ADA is. And so the first year being 1920, that was the year of COVID. That actually became what was known as the Hold Harmless year. And so you can see we were funded at uh, just over 16,000. The funding year was 1920, and that was our ADA. That carried over for um, the next couple of years. And so you can see in 2021, we were still able to keep that same ADA, even though we didn't have to report it. And then in current year, prior year, that's the model that we use for ADA funding. That's our current model. There is talk out there that we may change the ADA funding model to a three-year average, which would be fantastic for Oceanside. But right now, we have to use the assumptions that we can only use either prior year or current year. And so that puts us next year at just about 14,844, what we're anticipating. So can all of this change in two weeks? Yes, it can, but this is what we have to function off of right now. So we'll have to wait to see what the governor, not the mayor has to say. Next yeah. slide. Dr. Norman. Yeah. Um, okay. Are we the only school district that's experiencing declining enrollment? We are not, it's happening statewide. I believe that there was only one county that didn't have declining enrollment, but for the most part, just about everybody is. Yeah, thank you. May I add to that? Yeah. Actually, Decline enrollment is nationwide. It's a nationwide issue. Is. And near Sacramento is the one county that's experiencing growth. Yeah. But nationwide, this is phenomenal that um, it's happening. You know, for whatever reason, people well, are not reproduced or um, they're leaving, even leaving the country. So there we are. And it will be interesting to see what happens next year. Um, we came out of COVID really not knowing what to expect with attendance, and Oceanside ended up doing really well, only losing about 112 students. We had anticipated up to over 400. So it will be interesting to see what happens next year if we return back to the pattern of over 400 or if, if perhaps we don't see that much of a decline, and that, again, directly will impact our revenue. Next slide. So here's our multi-year projection on unrestricted. And so we like to look at unrestricted because those are the funds that um, we have the most control over. However, our revenue in unrestricted, and so that's where your LCFF dollars come in, um, is still less than what our expenses are. And that's what puts us out. So in 21-22, we're doing okay. When you see amount needed to meet reserve, it's zero, which means we're able to meet our reserve. In 22-23, we're at zero again. But then at 23-24, we're at 8.48 million, and that's where we fall short. And um, we have our COLA going down that year, and then we also have our ADA going down that year. So those are factors that directly impact our revenue that year. Next slide. Here's our combined summary. So this is when we put our restricted and our unrestricted together. And so it's the same in terms of revenue expenses, but you can see it gets much greater. Our revenues are just over 300 million. And then um, going across, you can see that they adjust for 22-23 and 23-24. And when we need our uh, reduction amounts to meet the reserve of 3%, our third year out, that's 23-24. And in just a few weeks, that third year out becomes our second year out. And so those you're going to see shifts when we come back together for our first interim next year. Next slide. So we talk about concerns. And so a lot of people will say, well, if you're getting a COLA, doesn't that mean that you're able to you know, have a lot more money? The, the problem is when you're looking at the drop in ADA, if we don't have ADA relief and we have to go from our hold harmless 1920 ADA to our current year ADA or even um, this year, it's a huge drop, and when you apply it to what you get per student, um, we lose about $20 million. And so when you see that drop in ADA, that's how you get that. You apply the per student amount by how, um, stu how many students you actually drop. Then you have your COLA, and the COLA is fantastic. It, it could be more than 533, but right now that's what we have to budget on. So even with the COLA, we're still starting off negative, and then you add step and column, stirs and purrs, health and welfare. Currently, it's uncapped, um, increase in utilities and liability insurance. So our shortfall, we're starting off at 18.8, but that's with our current assumptions. Next slide. 
So our budget stabilization plan, we've been working closely with HR to align staffing with declining enrollment for fiscal solvency. Um, we've reduced and unrestricted for our supplies and services to other operating expenses. Uh, we've met with all of the different departments and sites to cut at least 15% from budgets. We're also utilizing one-time COVID funds to allow time to correct our structural deficit right now. We still have two more years left on some of our COVID funds, um, so we're making sure that we're spending those wisely as we wind down those different funding sources. And that is it. That should be our last slide if we have any questions. Do we have public comment okay. first? No. We don't There's have no any. Comment. There's no public okay. comment on this one, so I'll make a motion to approve. Second. And then anybody have questions? Comments? Yeah, just a comment, a couple comments. Um, the, the enrollment and attendance issues are, um, are big, and they started before COVID, too, in our district. I would love it if we saw actions that were directly designed to impact that next year to make sure that our attendance is up as high. I know that there, with COVID there are some things we can't control, but uh, attendance rates generally being high is good for the kids, it's good for the district's financials, all the things uh, it's good for. And then um, getting our enrollment up, making sure that we have direct actions to recruit new families to the areas, families that have young children that are becoming school age to make sure we have events that are on each of our campuses because I know as soon as parents get onto our campuses and see the amazing things that our teachers and staff are doing, it makes a huge difference. With, if they don't have students on the campus, then they're getting recruited from this outside non-public and this other agency to come, come to our schools, but the only way we buy them in is to have them on our campuses. So. I would love to see LCAP uh, utilized to address this specifically as it's in the service of our district and students. I'm in agreement with you, but at the same time realize that um, declining enrollment is, is not just the public schools, it's the charter schools, it's even the religious schools. The children just are not there. You know, we're in that bubble of um, declining enrollment and it'll probably continue just as a, just as we were in that bubble of um, boomers, you know, it's now, you know, the pendulum swinging the other way. I agree that we need to have, we should have activities that promote and encourage students to be there, but at the same time, we can't get, what's the expression? Blood out of stone or turn up or something. So, but I agree, you know, if in some cases it may mean going door to door but the children are not there. This is the first year that the charter school um, enrollment dropped in our state. It's the first year in many years. That they have acknowledged. Well, it's yeah. reported to the state. All right, we have a first and a second. Are there any more comments or questions for staff? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 7E, say aye. 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 All right, motion carries 5-0. We're gonna take a 10 minute break. It is 7.51 and we're gonna come back right at eight o'clock sharp for a biology break. It's a long meeting, I apologize. Equity and inclusion, item 8A, expanded learning opportunities program plan for 2021-2022 school year. Thank you, Dr. Begin. This uh, item is an informational only item for the board um, re regarding our expanded learning opportunities program. The board previously approved the ELOP funding plan. Um, the Oceanside Unified School District was awarded these funds, grant funds to expand academic and enrichment opportunities for students. And the ELOP or ELOP program plan informs our educational partners on the process the district and community organizations follow to develop engaging before and after school activities based on student interests. The program plan must be pre presented to the Board of Education per the County Office of Ed for informational purposes only and provide examples, including but not limited to some position descriptions that, and activities that support the ELOP. So that's why you see some of the attached job descriptions to this plan, but this is an informational only item. All right. Anybody have any questions? I just um, wanted to ask why there, Jefferson Middle School is not included in this 
um, plan than the original plan? So uh, this particular plan, so we're bringing forth um, several summer learning opportunity plans this, this evening. Um, and one of the ones we'll bring forth on the June, the first June board meeting will be the Jefferson um, School Program Plan because we're adding additional partners to their programming plan for the summer learning opportunities. So will Jefferson have the same 8 to 430 program that these other schools will have? It will. It will also have additional activities focused on arts and STEM as well. All right. That, that was my only question because the Ed Code says that school sites in the lowest income communities should be prioritized. So that's all. Super. I'm excited. All right. That one didn't require a vote. Moving on to item 8B, agenda addendum to the memoranda of understanding with ACES and 21st CCLC assets. Yes, so Oceanside Unified School District receives ACES and 21st Century Assets funding, grant funding to operate before and after school programs and enrichment opportunities for students at various school sites. The district has contracted with several service providers to operate these programs in accordance with OUSD and SDCOE guidelines. The purpose of these addenda is to distribute the adjusted rate increase awarded by the County Office of Ed to service providers so they may continue to support students in before and after school programs. So it's recommended that the Board of Ed um, approve the agenda of Miranda, Miranda, Memoranda excuse me, of Understanding with After School ACES and 21st Century Programs um, and regarding the rate increase as awarded by the San Diego County Office of Ed. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. There's no second. Any questions? What's the percentage the increases? Do we know? I don't have that information. I can get it for you, though. All right. I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 8B, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. <coughs> Moving on to item 8C. This item is about the Summer Intercession and Expanded Learning Opportunities Program. The ELOP program provides funding for before and after school programs and summer school enrichment programs for TK through sixth grade, as well as middle and high school when funding is available. The purpose of this MOU is to establish and provide the means for the district and service providers to coordinate and deliver summer intercession learning programs that will focus on developing academic, social, emotional, and physical pupil-centered expanded learning and enrichment opportunities. We're recommending that the Board of Education approve the MOU for our summer intercession and expanded learning opportunities with the understanding that we'll bring the Jefferson MOU to our next board meeting before summer intercession begins. Thank you for the explanation. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, second. Any questions or comments for staff? So this is for like the second half of the day? This is the enrichment part of the summer program or this is the whole thing? That's correct. It, it actually covers both. So it, it provides full day programming and allows students to opt into either a full day option through our service providers or in the after school option. And when I looked at the schedule, it looked like the first part of the day was specifically Literacy focused. I'm sorry, I'm going off memory. I should have written this down. Um, are all of our programs using the same literacy programs for intervention? Not our contracted service providers are not. They they use they use their own. Um, however, our summer school learning opportunities that are through our own school sites. They they do use the same. Okay. And are we doing assessment before the session and after the session to check to see how much learning they've done? Or do we have a standardized set of, of that? Or is it just depending on the provider? Well, each provider does have their own assessment, but it's not a standard assessment across all providers. So I guess in, in the future, in the next year, I'd like us to try and find a way to do that across the board so that all the kids are, we're seeing where they're at, making sure that when they come out of summer school, they're making the gains that we expect them to make with the programs that are in place. Any more questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Joyce, I would just like to share with you that we have been reviewing our data from our iReady assessment. And the iReady assessment is our universal screener. So what it does is we take a look at where students are in uh, language arts and mathematics. 
And we just finished, closed the window for that assessment. I think uh, it was just reported like last week. So all of our schools are reviewing that data and we use that to prioritize the enrollment into our summer intervention programs. So uh, we open it up to all students and we fill to capacity based on the number of, st of staff that we have uh, available to serve the students. So um, in the answer of your question, one of the things that we can do is look at where the students are based on the assessment that is um, just completed here the first week in May. And then we could look at doing a closing assessment for those same students um, for that data. If you'd like, we could even do that. Yeah, I would love that. Um, I just like to see the model of reading intervention continue through the summer. Because, but yeah. All right, super. I'm gonna call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 8C, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 9, policy development. Item 9A, approval of deletion to board policies, and there's three of them there, employee employment references. All right, staff has brought forward this item for board consideration. This is the deletion of three existing policies. They are found in our regulations, and CSBA in 2017 made the recommendation that this be eliminated from policy and retained in regulation, which we have done. So we're asking for approval of this item. I move approval. Second. We have a first and a second. Any questions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 9A, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Item 9B. No change in content. This is just an updated policy for board. All right, any questions? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. First and second. All right, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 9B, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 9C. Similar to 9B, there's no change in content here. It's just an update to board policy 6173.1, education for foster youth. Move approval. Second. First and a second. Any questions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 9C, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 9D, resolution 43 for the 2021-2022 school year. This is the proclamation for the National School Nurse and Health Technician Day. Bear with me, I'm gonna read this <laughs> proclamation. It's my turn. All right. Whereas students are the future and by investing in them today, we are ensuring our world for tomorrow and whereas families deserve to feel confident that their children will be cared for when they are at school, and whereas all students have the right to have their physical and mental health needs safely met while in school setting, and whereas students today face more complex and life-threatening health problems requiring care in schools, and whereas the COVID-19 pandemic has emphasized the essential role school nurses and health technicians play in student health and academic successes, and whereas school nurses, health technicians have served a critical role in improving public health and ensuring students' academic success for more than 100 years. And whereas school nurses and health technicians address the home and community factors, social determinants that impact students' health, and whereas school nurses and health technicians act as a liaison to the school community, families, and healthcare providers on behalf of the children's health by promoting wellness and improving health outcomes for our nation's children, and whereas School nurses and health technicians support the health and educational success of children and youth by providing access to care when children's cognitive development is at its peak. And whereas school nurses and health technicians are members of the school-based teams to address the school population. And whereas school nurses and health technicians understand the link between health and learning and are in a position to make a positive difference for children every day. That concludes. Um, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I just wanted to say the uh, health technician here at Chavez has been a huge help for myself and my family and my Chavez. student. It, they've just been really helpful for some of the medical needs we have, so I appreciate them. I'll, I bet for my wife. Yeah. I'll, they've been asked to do so much. Yeah, I'll, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of approving the proclamation, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0.
Moving on, we are on the last page, yay. <laughs> Item 9E, resolution number 44, Proclamation for Better Hearing and Speech Month. I, hi, I'm very honored to do this. Um, some of you may or may not know that I, I, I have a hearing loss. And also, I'm a lifelong stutterer. So um, that you probably do know. <laughs> so um, I'm, as I said, I'm really honored to read this. Proclamation for Better Hearing and Speech Month, May 2022, resolution number 44 year 2021 through 2022. Whereas the American Speech Hearing Association, ASHA, recognizes each year during the month of May as Better Hearing and Speech Month. And whereas the American Speech Hearing Association has chosen the 2022 theme for Better Hearing and Speech Month as Connecting People. And whereas the profession of school-based speech language Pathologists, audiologists, and teachers of the hearing impaired represent a community of thousands of professionals who dedicate their lives to helping children and students in need and providing support in schools across our district. And audiologists and speech language pathologists, pathologists throughout our nation make a special effort to inform, educate, and raise public awareness of speech, language, art, and hearing disorders, and whereas many of us take communication for granted, but illness or injuries make speaking and hearing a challenge for many Americans, and whereas by impaired communication, speech, language, and hearing disorder can limit academic achievement, social adjustment, and career advancement, and whereas audiologists and speech language pathologists are professionals who specialize in, in the identification and treatment of communication disorders, conditions that affect millions of Americans, and whereas with early diagnosis and proper treatment, most people with communication disorders can lead full and productive lives, and whereas more than 42 million people in the United States, one in 10 families have hearing, speech, or language impairments, and whereas most people with communication or communicative disorders can be helped through medical and surgical treatment, hearing aids, and hearing and speech rehab rehabilitation, and whereas many people don't seek treatment for hearing loss because of a perceived stigma or embarrassment, and now, therefore, be it resolved that the Oceanside Unified School District Board of Education does hereby proclaim May 1st through May 31st, 2022 as Better Hearing and Speech Month. Thank you. Thank you for reading that. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I have a first and a second. I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving the proclamation, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. We're on our last, one of our last items, public comment on non-agenda items. We have four public comments tonight. I'll let Ms. Givens call them up. Good evening, trustees of the board, Dr. Vitale, district staff, teachers, students, families, and community members. I am fifth grade teacher Victoria Mariani, and I would like to say a few words about the state of our conditions at San Luis Rey. At our recent modernization meeting, I got the impression that district leaders and hired architects hold the opinion that San Luis Rey teachers should be grateful for the current plans and state of the project, and that our questions and reservations are a nuisance. Theater club directors have had a valid concern about the low ceiling height of that multi-purpose room from day one, and we have been both persistent and vocal about it. When questioned at the modernization meeting, Penny McGrew reiterated that there is no money in the budget for it. We do understand that the current budget district leaders allocated wouldn't accommodate a ceiling blowout, but does Penny understand that we know there is money in the district? Money that was made from the sales of Garrison and Pacifica, money that is being used for a proposed new district office. We were blindsided at the modernization meeting when I inquired about the architect's rendering of the SLR MPR and what looked to me as a support beam 
running vertically down the center of the building. It was explained to me by architect Dave Bell as an HVAC duct. Feels like a bait and switch here. We complain that the ceiling needs to be blown out, and then a duct that looks six to nine inches in depth is now running the length of the room. Uh, how has that slipped into the plan? It was never straight up brought to our attention, and it is ludicrous. HVAC should be tucked up in the ceiling that you refuse to raise, under the ceiling tiles, or in a side soffit, not exposed in the premier sight lines of the audience space. All theaters have ceilings that are as high as or higher than the stage. It is acoustically preferable. Think about it. Have you ever been in a theater where the stage height was taller than the ceiling height of the house? No, because it is unheard of and it is of poor design. Because we need to have a flat audience space, we lose the benefit of having staggered seating. So the audience view will definitely be hampered by an unsightly HVAC duct running down the center of the MPR. I know that raising the ceiling may cost a bit more money, but the ceiling height is there under those yellow stained crumbling ceiling tiles. The space has good bones and the potential for improved acoustics that could optimize performances. I don't see why it can't even be looked at or considered. Those old ceiling tiles need to go anyway, so what is the harm in just looking into it? Dr. Vitali, Dr. Lovey, board members, if you truly do put students first, if you genuinely do care about keeping the arts alive in Oceanside, if you do really believe in providing opportunities for diverse students and want to observe for yourself the limitations of our space, then consider yourselves formally invited to our current production of a Seagator medley this Friday evening at 6 p.m. and Saturday at 3 p.m. We really would be thrilled to have you in the audience, and we feel confident that you will understand why we are so adamant about changing the height of that ceiling to maximize the performance quality of the venue. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Next speaker. I was at the district office earlier in the week for something, and what struck me on the wall was the pictures, and I assume it's in order of authority. And I, it hadn't dawned on me, but the board of directors was on the top row, and then the superintendent and associates were on the next row. In other words, board, you have the authority in everything you do you are the ones that are responsible. You are the ones that are responsible for anything okay to go into the library. You are the ones that are responsible for the budget. You are the ones that are responsible for selling school property. It, it falls to you. It seems like it's in the reverse sometimes because in, in about a year of observing the meetings, it seems like the staff um, that puts together it appears, the agenda, and, and then the board rubber stamps it. Um, I don't think it's supposed to work that way. So I want you to know the authority that you do have, board, and the responsibility. And seriously, Eric, you wonder why enrollment in the schools are declining? Um, it is a lot in California. They don't like the equity. And this is no offense to those that are uh, employed to do the DEI and the um, SEL programs. No offense at all. But don't you see people? <laughs> the, I think you're in a bubble in, in, in your profession. We on the outside see it. You're not achieving. This is not working. SEL, DEI is not working. And you see it in the test scores. People on the outside are saying this school doesn't perform along with other public schools. I have talked to so many people, especially with, uh, collecting school choice petition signatures. So many young people are homeschooling, Eric, it's true. And, and there are many reasons. Uh, they don't like the gender you know, fluidity. Uh, God forbid that, uh, you know, boys are allowed to go into the girls' restrooms, locker rooms, if it comes to the school district. I don't know if they are now. Um, they, um, the test scores are down, and the money that is spent on DEI and SEL, um, no offense, again, but if we did away with all that, focused on the ABCs, I, I think you'd have a more productive, academically, uh, successful environment, seriously. And parents are aware. We don't have any here. 
they're not involved here, but they're pulling their, their children out Thank seriously. Thank you for your time. Proverbs 31, 8 says in the Bible, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of those who are destitute. Speak, defend their right to the needy. Those would be the kids. Ephesians 5, 10 through 14 says, we must avoid unfruitful works. We are, we are to expose these works because our silence, our silence as parents may be interpreted as approval. It's not approval. God needs people who will stand to take a stand uh, for the rights of others. You guys do not have the right of, of uh, first mention to our kids. You don't. You don't have the right to ask a kid in a classroom, uh, here's a list of genders, choose what you want, but don't tell your parents. Oh, and if you fill this out without telling your parents, we'll throw you a pizza party. You don't have the right to do that. Again, you two, men on the board, I asked you last, Last month I asked you, be men on this board and stand for the kids. Don't be bullies. You're being cowards and not saying anything. And I'm looking at both of you. You're both cowards. If you're, if you're letting this go on and you're not protecting the kids, that's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And you have kids and you have kid and she has a kid in the school district. And if you think that's right, you're, you know, this is not, a, this is not a, a propaganda for your, you know, whatever you're trying to, you know, BLM, CRT. It's not a political agenda. Reading, writing, arithmetic is what you're supposed to be teaching these kids. And the Constitution, it's great that you're bringing the Constitution. Maybe you actually listen to the parents for a change. Maybe you actually listen. I think it's great. But you need to go forward and you need to go farther above that, okay? You need to protect these kids. You two need to protect these kids. Be American men. Don't be cowards. Protect these kids. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Next speaker. So today the San Diego County Board of Supervisors um, tried to define what it is to be a woman. So only God, our creator, can define, define what it is to be a man and a woman. So in Genesis 1, verses 26 through 28, it says, and God, Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So uh, my question is, you know, as a school board, why are you peddling and pushing these gender issues on our children? They are our children. In an article in PubMed.gov, the data indicates that 82% of transgender individuals, 82% have considered killing themselves, with 40% who have attempted suicide. And suicide is the third leading cause of death in kids ages 10 to 14. So I ask you, why are you veering into these issues that have no place in the schools, this equity, gender, um, CRT, BLM, all of that is ridiculous. Eric Joyce, you have kids. You know, because of you men and women that aren't standing up for kids, boys are allowed to go in the girls' bathroom. What if your little daughter got assaulted because you men failed to protect her and her rights? That's, that's or what if... Take, take no, I, I'm saying you are a parent just like I am a parent. And the, the issues that you are promoting and supporting are hurting your own Excuse children me, as well. Excuse me. Um, I, have, I still have a minute to talk. Yes. This is a public, your this is a public we're meeting. Not single no, out this is an issue family. that is affecting my children. It's and so, affecting. no, I will speak on behalf of my children and other and children. Speak on behalf of your okay. children. Okay, it's not okay to allow boys into girls' restrooms. It's not okay to allow boys to compete against girls' sports and take their scholarships. None of this is okay. I mean, before you know it, we're going to allow men who think that they're women to go into women's shelters and 
these men that are trying to be women to go into women's prisons. Where do we draw the line as a society? So as a board, do the right thing. Do the right thing and protect our children. They are the most vulnerable and they are our future. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. All right, next item is board staff discussion. Eric, would you like to share anything? Sure. Have at it. Um, Have at it. Please address your comments to me. My children, just like your own, we are protecting them. So in the future, if you have something to say, please address it to the board who is responsible. And you're right, we take full responsibility and are proud of the actions we are doing. You brought up something really important, that trans youth health is an incredibly important thing to talk about. That's exactly why we do keep it open in an open space in our schools to talk about it. So standing up for, for our kids is no, what this we, isn't a is debate. Excuse me. You've had your public yeah. comment. No, the difference is you're pushing it. You're no, we are not. Everywhere. No you're, comment. There's clubs that are everywhere. No. You're out of order. Ma'am. No. No. You, you you're had promoting. your three minutes. All right. I am adjourning the meeting at 828.